Hey guys, how you doing? So, uh, welcome to lesson two of chapter 10. Uh, in this lesson, we're gonna look at asexual reproduction, particularly in eukaryotes and how different eukaryotes uh, will employ asexual reproduction. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, uh, so uh, eukaryotes, uh, so the methods in eukaryotes are often more complicated uh, than the ones in prokaryotes, mainly because eukaryotes are larger, they've got membrane-bound organelles, and their, their structures are simply more complex, and so that process of reproduction will take more time uh, and more energy, okay? But here's just a few different methods that they can use. Um, if you've got vegetative propagation, which uh, you know, as the name implies, uh, usually is used by plants, uh, binary fission, just to confuse you a little bit more, um, is different from the prokaryotic binary fission. It's used, uh, sorry, it's done using mitosis, uh, budding, parthenogenesis, and we'll look at spores as well. Okay, so um, now keep in mind, uh, many eukaryotes, we're, when we talk about eukaryotes, we're talking about uh, most of the other things uh, that we see. So the animals, the plants, fungi, but also protists and other uh, things as well. And so all of these things can employ um, asexual reproduction or, and sometimes and, sexual reproduction because there's more than one way to reproduce. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, vegetative propagation. Um, uh, it's basically when one part of it, uh, an organism separates and it grows elsewhere, okay? So I'll give you a few examples. Um, the easiest one to sort of know is the plant cuttings. Um, you'll know that if you, know, if you do a bit of gardening that if you cut one part of the plant, put it into the ground, uh, give it the nutrients it requires to survive, it will grow and sprout into a whole new plant, yeah? So that cutting um, there is actually of a marijuana plant, um, but that's a, um, that's a plant cutting uh, showing uh, the growth of a new plant uh, from the branch of an old one. Okay? Um, other ways of doing it, uh, plants can also release what we call runners. So some plants um, will have a kind of main crown. Uh, this is a strawberry crown or strawberry plant here. And you can see there, uh, during the winter, what the strawberry plants will actually do is instead of growing flowers, it will sprout runners. The runners uh, will go along the ground and then they will find a new spot and a new plant will sprout and then what ha will happen is the runner uh, will either stay there or it cuts off um, and the new individual becomes a new plant colonized in a new area, okay? Uh, grafting is also another version uh, as well. Grafting is basically uh, when one segment of a plant is uh, taken off and grafted or placed onto another segment of a plant. Um, the most popular sort of well-known uh, example of grafting is in grape vines. Grapes grow as a vine. However, uh, when they're grown in vineyards, uh, what they do is they actually graft it onto the stem of another plant, which allows the grape to then take advantage of the root system of that plant um, and collect water from the ground, which uh, you know fertilizes. So, which um, which gives uh, the plants all the water that it needs to grow. Okay. Um, rhizomes. Now, rhizomes uh, are probably less known, but if I showed you this picture, you'd probably be able to recognize that this is a ginger root. Yeah, uh, a rhizome is basically like a um, an underground stem. Yeah, it's a stem that holds nutrients and it grows un, uh, underground. Um, and so, what will happen is in ginger plants, um, this is the the ginger, the part that you know people normally eat, uh, is actually the rhizome. And then there is a plant that sprouts from that. If I take a section of this, so if I cut this section off the ginger, and I plant this ginger in the ground somewhere else, what will happen is, um, you know, if the ground is good enough and fertile enough, that a new plant will then sprout from the ginger, yeah? And so that underground stem can survive without the top plant because it's got these huge reserves of nutrients uh, that allows it to sprout new plants from that area, okay? Uh, another very close example to an underground stem is actually tubers or bulbs, yeah? When you eat a potato, that is a tuber or a bulb, yeah? And it is basically like an underground reserve, um, and from the potato will sprout the new plant. So the potato plant, um, so the potato plant can uh, grow, and then new tubers will form, and what will happen is uh, those tubers can be isolated and placed elsewhere, and a new plant will sprout from those tubers as well. So all of these methods are asexual reproduction in plants. Uh, of course, most plants can, um, can also produce flowers and pollen, which is an asexual reproduction uh, in them. But uh, when conditions are harsh, or, or you know, when there's not enough nutrients uh, or not enough vectors to to um, undergo sexual reproduction, they will use asexual reproductive methods as well. Yeah, um, and once again, all of these produces um, offspring that are genetically identical to their parents. 
Uh, binary fission using mitosis. So this is a little bit different from binary fission in eukaryotes. Uh, the reason is because uh, it is basically just mitosis occurring in a eukaryotic cell um, and it occurs in small multicellular organisms whereas binary fission in prokaryotes will occur in a single celled organism okay um, and it uses mitosis so you know the prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase um, the best example is the amoeba so this is the amoeba it is a small um, multicellular organism and what it would do is that it will um, divide using mitosis, you know, the same mitosis that you've been learning about in chapter 9, um, and it will split into two new amoebas um, cells which can form, okay? Um, that's what the amoeba looks like, yeah, you've got um, that, you know, that kind of uh, goopy-ish um, like organism uh, that can split in half. Um, paramecium is another good example as well. Paramecium are these protists that can split into two as well, and so you can see there, there's one paramecium, there's two and there's that cleavage uh, between the two during cytokinesis that allows them to split into two cells, okay? Uh, anemones, um, sea anemones will divide using binary fission. Um, here are two anemones there, and they, or one anemone about to be broken up into two. Uh, the same method, that binary fission method, that kind of splitting down the middle and then uh, into two new individuals, yes? Now, um, binary fission can only occur in very simple eukaryotes yeah in other words they can't occur in complex eukaryotes because to split um, particularly the ones uh, with organs you can't just split an organism to two and you know part all the organs and things like that but if it only has kind of tissues and structures like that um, it can and it uh, sometimes will okay uh, budding so when part of an organism breaks off and forms a new organism now this can be very similar to um, to plant cuttings, but budding is usually referred to for animals rather than for plants. Um, so, for example, sponges. Not this kind of sponge, but this kind of sponge, yeah? Um, these sponges here don't have any organs. That is, every single cell in that uh, sponge um, will, will form tissues and the tissues don't have any organs or structures among them. So what that means is that if you break off a segment of the sponge, you can regrow it somewhere else, yeah? And that will often, uh, often happen for sponges in order to reproduce, yeah? Another organism that can do it is hydra as well. Not that hydra, not that hydra, uh, but this hydra here. So this is a little funny looking thing, and uh, if you keep an aquarium, you'll probably see this uh, sticking on your glass every now and then. Um, but he is a uh, animal, and he is related, um, he's related to jellyfish and sea anemones and things like that. Um, but uh, what he would do is that, um, you know, uh, you've got a main hydra that grows there, and then you've got a second one that will bud off the side, similar to how plant cuttings work. Uh, but this one here um, will break off and then attach himself onto a glass and form a new individual. And so that also forms um, new offspring as well. Okay, now parthenogenesis. This one's a little bit more complex, um, but uh, sort of bear with me. Uh, it is slightly different from all the ones you've seen before because it still involves an egg. Okay, uh, parthenogenesis literally means virgin birth. Yeah, parthenos meaning virgin, genesis meaning birth. And so parthenogenesis um, is like um, giving birth without the fertilization method. Yeah, and so it's asexual reproduction that occurs without fertilization. Now remember. Note how I said fertilization, which means there's no egg and sperm joining together, okay? So what that means is the offspring are often born from an unfertilized egg, yeah? The egg has not joined with the sperm, but can still produce a young, yeah? Sounds a little bit weird, but if I explain it, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense, yeah? Uh, what that means is the offspring is still genetically identical to the parent, um, and it will mainly occur in animals, yeah? Organisms that will produce eggs. Yeah, and typically it will all be female. And so you, it's worth wondering, well, why is it always female? Um, and the reason is because uh, the egg contains all of the structures that the cell needs to survive. The sperm really just delivers the DNA. Um, and so if the egg can overcome that, uh, that input of DNA from the sperm, um, then it will produce all female offspring, okay? So normally um, fertilization will look something like this. You've got an egg, and then what will happen is a sperm comes along and will give uh, a chromosome which will then join with the egg. So here's a chromosome, uh, a single chromosome there and here's a second one there. And so you've got two pairs of chromosomes making a full number 
of chromosomes in the zygote, yeah? The example here is actually on baby sharks, uh, but you can use any animals for this example, okay? Now, in parthenogenesis, what you get is something slightly different. You've got your egg, and the egg will um, divide and form uh, a single cell. Sorry, you've got your precursor to the egg, and then it will divide and form your egg, and the egg only has one set of chromosomes. But what will happen is either the eggs will combine the genetic material from other eggs to create a full one, or the chromosomes within the egg will duplicate in order to create a full set of chromosomes again. However, because um, the duplicating chromosomes are all uh, an X chromosome, um, or a f the female chromosome, then what you get is that um, the offspring are also female, not male. And so sperm, and therefore males, are completely eradicated from the picture. Okay? Um, Here's an example, whiptail lizards. Um, so this is what a whiptail lizard looks like. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, in whiptail lizards, there is a species variant uh, or a subspecies of whiptail lizards that is all female. Yeah? This uh, particular species here uh, is in all females and reproduces only by parthenogenesis. There are no males in this species at all, which is quite an interesting phenomenon. Um, this whiptail uh, subspecies sits between two other species and you can see here this is the male of one species and this is the male of another species and due to some sort of genetic mutation in the population you've got this all female species okay um, another example aphids uh, you might have seen this on a few plants and, and things like that around but these aphids here reproduce asexually they can reproduce sexually as well but they can reproduce through parthenogenesis yeah which means um, that these aphids, when they reproduce through parthenogenesis, are all female. Yeah? The female aphid looks like this, um, and the males will look like this, and sometimes the female doesn't even need it. It will produce eggs, and the eggs will then duplicate their chromosomes and become f uh, self-fertilized, um, and therefore um, produce a new female aphid. Yeah? So um, parthenogenesis is different from your previous versions of asexual reproduction in that there is still an egg being involved. Yeah, so it happens in, uh, you can see here, in higher order um, animals, um, but it is still an asexual form of reproduction because there is no egg and sperm joining, there's no genetic variation, and the offspring are genetically identical to the parents. Okay, the last one, spores. We've already covered this, so I won't spend too long on it, uh, but once again, um, Fungus uh, will grow through a network called the mycelium, and they're like the roots or the network or the fibers of it, um, and it's all asexual reproduction. Um, they are produced by mitosis, and they're released through uh, a spore sac called a sporangium, yeah? And so that's your um, mycelium network below the bread there, and then they will sprout these new spore sacs or sporangiums, which then release the spores um, and they will then colonate new you know, pieces of bread and things like that, okay? So that's just an overview of all the asexual re reproductive methods in eukaryotes, okay? Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.